Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Quarantine Series, the Quarantine Film Series. I'm your host, Kabir Segel, coming to you live from the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. It's great to um, to be with you again. I want to say hi to everyone watching. Hi to mom and dad watching downstairs. Um, so look, the Quarantine Series is all about shining the spotlight on creative people, creative individuals who are um, making the world a little bit of a better place, enriching our lives with their soul, and uh, I just think it's important to be there for the creative community. So if you can uh, support the projects you learn about on this broadcast. And in addition, think local, local film festival, um, local bookshop, local musicians. Let's try to be there for the local community, artists and audiences. Let's come together. Um, all right. So if you want to learn who will be on the show, pretty easy. You know what to do. Just subscribe to my social media and you'll be in the loop as to who is on, when they're on, and you can study up. Uh, as to their background, and you can also ask them questions. So if you're watching live or if you're watching on the rebroadcast, feel free to drop a comment. Let us know what you're thinking. I'll try to opine to your questions um, in uh, in short order. And in addition, let us know where you are watching from. A very special international edition today of the show, um, which is cool because, uh, you know, we have India in the house, which is nice. We have George in the house. So bring people together from all over all over the world. So let us know where you're watching from. Drop a comment. Um, let us know. All right. So now for the um, the main event, we get to meet the remarkable artist. She's a terrific filmmaker. Uh, her re recent movie, Cargo, selected for some August film festivals in South by Southwest. She's um, um, a terrific lady of cinema, cinema. She's made music videos. So please welcome to the Corny series, the maestro herself, Arti Kadav, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here on the show and yeah, I wanna tune in and listen to all the other episodes as well. Sounds really exciting, yeah. Thank you, well, ple pleasure to, to have you here. First, let me ask you, um, how are you doing? How are you doing during this period of quarantine? How has it affected some of your projects? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, I was, uh, planning to travel to South by Southwest in March uh, fifth, on March 15th and the whole lockdown hit us on March 14th so I was really upset about it because I, we had actually cargo had around 25 festivals lined up and I had really set out this year for traveling I hadn't even traveled last year because I was of, of course finishing up cargo so I was yeah I was a little upset when the whole thing hit in and just to be you know locked in uh yeah but then I guess it's like you have to take every setback into a value creation opportunity so I, I i have kind of started reading a lot in fact i started uh, this thing called as like i'll read one short story one sci-fi short story every day something like that i started and you know uh, so you know small things like small daily goals like starting running and stuff like that so i'm doing that and i'm writing a lot so yeah i mean it's a golden period for development because we are all old and and we are like forced to you know stare at the white page and you know crack it so i guess yeah i'm making the most of it as much as possible but yeah i do miss going out meeting people meeting friends hanging out having fun but yeah i mean i think this whole thing online thing is yeah, cool like and we're happy that like at least we have the technology where we are not exactly isolated like you know even though we're physically distanced so yeah we're trying to make most of it yeah. I'm, I'm glad um, you're making the most of it. You seem very productive in this time. So um, tell me, how do you um, how do you structure your time? Is there a routine every day? Do you wake up at the same time? Do you go for a walk? How do you make sure you you um, you know don't go crazy? And there's there's <laughs> no. I've always been a super early riser. Only thing is, like, I used to get up at like I mean when I was writing cargo, I used to get up at four a.m. in the morning. So I was like that early riser. Of course, in quarantine, I've become a little lazy, so I get up at six, but I, I wake up in the morning. I, you know, do my, you know, I, I mean, I don't try to rush into work immediately as I wake up. I just try to go for a walk first, take in the nature, just start the day fresh. And then I write, I write for like a couple of hours. And then, of course, you have to cook for yourself because it's, it's that kind. So then I cook yeah and so yeah th essentially that and then yeah once i cook then the afternoon i'm more chilled out then i get back to you know uh, my work and maybe also have one series which i watch so maybe like i like i didn't i i mean binging is very attractive but i realized that whenever i binge like i i 
you know the third day of binging because you end up binging for two days finishing off a series the third day you feel really awful so now i like try to binge one episode at a time so you know i watch that and then i read uh like that my one story goal that i have to fulfill like you know it could be you know so on lazy days it's just a three page or four page story but on tough tougher days it's a 56 page story so i read that so things like that and days i don't feel like uh, writing it's okay i then read more like things like that but yeah i'm yeah essentially that yeah what what are you binging these days Oh, I was watch. So I hadn't seen Crown at all. So I thought I should start seeing it from season one because season four was there. So I'm really in season two right now. So yeah, yet to you know. So I'm doing that. Uh, I think there was one more show. Uh, I'm forgetting the name. Just one second. Maybe I know. Um, Crown's a good one. Crown is a yeah. good one. <clears throat> yeah, I think, and then. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think people should binge um, when it's available. Cargo. So tell us about, tell us about Cargo. What what is the um, project about, and how you came up with this incredible project? So I have been passionate about science fiction for a very long time, and I'm based out of India. So actually, India, though we have a you know culture of rich mythological stories, which is part of our collective consciousness. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, the Indian film industry don't make enough science fiction. In fact, that there's like really dearth of science fiction. There's literally, you can prop. There might be in all these years two or three science fiction films. Uh, so when, uh, like last five six years, when I was struggling to make my film, I had like massive struggle because people were just not open to any sci-fi story. So Cargo was a story that I realized, like I had a lot of resources in my favor because of all the years I'd been working. So I had like a studio available to me on December and this. So based on that, I thought, let me make a film. And it had to be science fiction because I'm such a huge science fiction fa fan. So Cargo essentially is the first spaceship, sci-fi spaceship film from India. And uh, yeah, so it like just came with that, like, you know, and everybody who worked on Cargo were essentially friends, like, you know. Even my uh, uh, producing partners or whoever came in, like uh, even the actress was my old friend. <laughs> so that's how we came together. In fact, Vikrant was the only one, the lead actor was the only one whom we actually, you know, reached out to because he's such a terrific actor. But uh, essentially, that was the idea that like let's make the first uh, science fiction film from India, make it very rooted in Indian culture, so it doesn't look like we took something from the West and just you know rehashed it for the audience. But it should feel very homegrown, and at the same time, you know, uh, have the ethos like you know have the same language as a Bollywood film, like try to have as much as possible. So that was the idea. It's it's a beautiful, um, and I and I totally hear you. There's it seems like there certainly is a dearth of science fiction. I can't name a, a growing up. I, I can't think of any science fiction I, that I know comes from India. And uh, <laughs> you're really the vanguard of this. Um, so, what is um, when you were making this project? What was the? How did you moor it to Indian, uh, to Indian themes? Ah, uh, so uh, so before making cargo, so I have this very funny story. Like I had a very insane struggle before I was making cargo. I was going, you know, doing the rounds of every production house. They were all turning me out. So. I was one day super angry and I'd gone to see Avengers in theater. And this is like, a, not the final Avengers, but the older Avengers. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm going to make a superhero film and I'm going to show these guys. They have been refusing me. You know, I was feeling like really angry, you know. So I started writing a superhero film, which was like nine superheroes and all like, you know, with existential angst, because that's what I was feeling when I was making this film, like really, you know. Uh, so, uh, but when I, I started writing it, I started realizing, you know, thinking about what superpowers to give them. And then I was researching what could be something that's very rooted in India. So in India, if you feel, you know, there's this whole con concept of rakshas, which is called, which are like essentially demons, but they are like shape shifting. They can take any form and they're also very ambiguous in the sense, like in, in India, the demons are not essentially bad people. They can be good also. Like, it's very ambiguous. And I, I really like that part of it. That, like, you know, uh, I mean, I, I like the uh, the fluidity of it. So I thought, why not uh, make a film, you know, with them? And then just one day, I, I'm, and actually the idea of Karo, it was just a brainwave I got. Like, I was actually traveling to Japan and I was just standing in the immigration line. And I was just like, uh, I mean, I think we all, everybody in that flight, we had an overnight flight. So we were all tired. We were just going through that motions, like, you know, giving your hands for fingerprints and this. 
and i was thinking what if like you know the way our luggage is moving in a conveyor belt what if humans after death are just moving in a conveyor belt and you know going for after life and after life or rebirth is a very indian concept again so i was thinking so that's how just the idea came in and then i started writing it with you know the rakshasas or the demons in mind and the after life concept it just just came together and i also feel that this one more thing that makes cargo very indian is not just these concepts but also you know the way the spaceship operates so if you've seen india uh, uh, if you ever gone to an indian government office the guy in the monitor the way these people like interact the conversations they have you know i tried to you know take in from that i wanted to extrapolate that what if the indian local bank you know has to now take care of this dead souls and take care of the spaceship management and stuff like that so those are the other things like how to make it more um, social uh, socially and culturally rooted besides the mythology aspect so those are the other things that we took care of so yeah it, essentially yeah, that just came together yeah did it um well it looks like a brilliant project and when you were editing it was was any of the story changed in the edit i mean sometimes i know was it with a narrative sometimes just you just film it according to the script but yeah. did anything change in the edit actually uh, not in the edit uh, cargo was a super low budget indie film so uh, during the shoot we had to change because what happened was the person we had taken studio for uh, they had given us the studio for 15 15 days and we thought we'll just push them cajole them to give it to us for 16 days and uh, then on the 15th day they said no no it was exactly for 15 days and so now you have to clear it up like you know break your spaceship and uh, when uh, so uh, on that day the production designer told us that you know you can't just break it in uh, an hour it will take two days to clean up the whole studio with a spaceship so basically we realized that we actually only have 14 <laughs> days like you know so we were asking for one more day but we were one day lesser so sort of there was a deficit of two days and there was like lot of important and this we realized like really close you know in the last few days so there was lot of deficit like time deficit so in general yeah we did compromise a lot during the shoot because we couldn't shoot one of the story tracks uh, the story tracks of the guy who stabbed there was a uh, you know who, basically the one that leads to the girl feeling disillusion uh, so there was a longer play there so that was one thing that we changed during the shoot and during the edit i think uh, you know uh, in the beginning of the film there is a guy who tells the entire concept like sort of gives a tech talk that was actually we had kept for the second part you know of the film we thought that it would uh, you know we thought that the way film plays out we don't need someone actually giving a tech talk in the beginning and explaining the concept but while during the edit was something that we moved it earlier because a lot of people had a lot of blind spots like in the understanding of the mythology of what is rebirth what is rakshas what is this post death transition services so we thought uh, we pulled it earlier for explaining it to people so that was a little bit of change got it i'm glad you um explained that and i'm glad you were able to get it all in in 14 days um <laughs> what um i always like asking about the music how did you think through the music and uh the comp um who to work yeah with in terms of the composer so uh, uh my music director uh, is shajan shake and actually uh, again because we had low uh, sort of low budget we couldn't really go with one of the ex existing established music directors um and uh, so i was going through soundcloud profiles of you know local musicians in bombay and i came across this guy who sounds very super unique like i thought like this is unlike anything any app heard in you know indian landscape or indian movies and then i figure i researched about this guy and found out found out that this guy actually composes music for games uh so i thought it would be very exciting to have an indian guy who actually works from india but composes music for games outside india uh, to work for our film and then when i met him i realized that he also used to run a metal band called providence and he was pretty popular like you know so a lot of my assistant director said that hey we used to go to providence concerts so actually when i met, went and met him in his studio there was him like you know it's like a heavy metal guy like full tattooed and his entire band and they were like so shocked like what who is this girl what is she talking and it took them some time to you know come on board but when they came on board oh my god they worked so hard like i was feeling inspired especially you know by the time you reach the point when you're doing your music you're very tired as a director because you've already i mean 
especially writer director you've written you've got on the team together you've shot then you've edited like you know so it's you're, you're a little tired so by the time you reach the music you need someone to you know make your life better so i think they were perfect like fresh new guys with a lot of energy and a lot of new thoughts so yeah so it just worked in our favor that's great what has been the response in india to the film so uh, actually uh, it's it's been fantastic because uh, when we came on netflix i was very worried that i might i was actually creating a whatsapp list which i figured out how to do it because i didn't know how to do it. so i thought i'll send people that hey my film is on netflix guys please go and see it but we were number 1 on netflix for 2 weeks and we were in top 10 in india for 21 days on netflix so and there were so many videos made by young guys who were you know giving tribute to the film so i was very happy that it actually resonated so much with young guys and i know that there's this massive fan following for science fiction but like uh, nobody uh, makes it so uh, they all look for you know a look towards hollywood or other countries for science fiction so they were so happy that there's a science fiction film being made in india so we had a fantastic response especially young college kids because i was almost every second day pulled in for a, a, a college a zoom meet up or that meet up or film discussion you know film club discussions so it was fantastic i was very happy more than uh, yeah we were very surprised actually <laughs> so yeah. i'm so glad um there there was a good response so i know it was part of south by southwest but what's the plan to um how can people in the us watch it oh it's on netflix worldwide it's on good. netflix worldwide. so they can all watch it in uh, they can type cargo there are two cargo films one with the, there's the older one with a zombie film and then there's, there's our film awesome. and yeah, you can watch it and I, actually people in you there are a lot of people in us who did see the film and because i did get a lot of messages we got covered in variety and we got covered in like, wire and stuff so yeah uh, so i think so i mean do check out go search sure. for cargo Netflix, sure yeah And do you feel like this is um no no I that that I'm aware do do you feel like um the sci-fi industry and in, sci-fi genre in India is growing do you feel like there is an ecosystem of people who are making projects like this now Yes I think so and I, I, the success for cargo was very interesting because a lot of people a lot of pat- platforms started announcing that we are also making a sci-fi so which was good that there was a reaction which was like you know a uh, very positive in a way that if someone says oh we also want to do sci-fi i i would also say kabir like you know it's just like our generation like the generation before that grew up in a tradition watching traditional indian movies which never had a sci-fi for for an for an uh, something like interstellar to exist in us something like 2001 space odyssey existed for someone to watch and get inspired like we never had that our gener- you know a generation before us never had that exposure to anything sci-fi but we as kids when we were growing up like in our tv we had like alien coming and we had like terminator coming in so you know i am noticing that a lot of people of our generation were very excited seeing these kind of stories and wanted to say hey let's make stories like this so i am actually meeting a lot of writers who are uh, crazy about sci-fi but they never thought it could be made in india and now that they see that there's a wave of change plus with so many streaming platforms coming in and they, in india there's a sort of competition going on like there are just way too many platforms like this netflix amazon but there are like five six local platforms as well so you know all of them are looking for content so i'm sure there's going to be a sci-fi boom right now we are we are in the cusp of change I hope so for sure what is yeah. a short term window tell us about this So, uh, so uh, before I made my feature film, I, I, so I had a long struggle. As is. so, you know, there's a way you. How do you deal with the struggle, right? You want to. You just can't just sit and mop at home. You, you want to make a difference. So at some point, I was thinking that like, uh, you, uh, I made up to five short films before I made my feature, and I realized that there's no platform except my own YouTube. Like this was five years ago. Now there are a lot of them. Like you know, so there was no platform except sort of YouTube to uh, showcase your short films. and there was no platform that was spotlighting the short film makers in general where like you know talking about their journey about their resume so it was like a very bullion thing that either you made a feature film then you're a filmmaker or you're not a filmmaker and i wanted to change that i wanted to say that hey if you've made a very good short film you can submit your films we will showcase your film uh, so if you uh, look at like if you go scroll down on the website you will also see that like uh, Uh, uh there uh, you know we have every week we premiere a film 
and when you click on the film you not just have the film to watch but you also have a interview of the director about the making you have information about the making so the idea was to like in general uh, make people see uh, see the story behind those short films and spotlight them so this was so, this started as a collective this four of uh, three of us started but like yeah so now we manage it and we run it and we get a lot of submissions in india and a lot of good films like end up on short film window so and it's a genre based platform so you can go search for good films so we also point to good international films its idea is that it's also you know uh, you like watch this you watch the of your peers and you also see it internationally so that's the idea everyone please go to shortfilmwindow.com uh, i also think um, let's get your social media up there so people can follow you as well. Yes. Um, yes. There, learn more. There yes. you go. You can f find our handle at the bottom of the screen. Um, yeah. And thanks so much for being on the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. Lovely talking to you. Thanks for having me. Really excited. Of course. Wish you, wish you all the best. That's our show today, everyone. If you want to learn who'll be on the broadcast, you can subscribe to my social media and make sure to take care of yourselves. Tough out there. Stay safe, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>